In this video, we'll look at the tragic story of Bryony Ann Goodsell, an 11-year-old girl who ventured out for a swim alongside her friends. The only problem was the kids didn't know there were crocodiles in the water, and when they realized, it was too late for Bryony. Her horrible death inspired a new crocodile management plan in Australia. On March 16, 2009, 11-year-old Bryony Ann Goodsell, her younger sister, 7-year-old Bethany Goodsell, and her friend, Naomi Lang, were playing at home in Darwin's rural outskirts. It was a Sunday, and the girls were enjoying some free time, despite the weather. March is a moody month in the top end of the Northern Territory in Australia. It's the last month, at least officially, of the wet season, meaning there's always a possibility of floods and cyclones. The days are hot and humid, and thunderstorms are not at all uncommon. With such weather, exploring the outdoors can be a little tiring. But not when you're a kid, and the whole world seems like a wonderful adventure. All four of them got on bikes, and then they started pedaling together. It was a good, honest day of fun. They weren't going too far from home, just somewhere they could swim. Bryony and her friends called the creek crossing Black Jungle. They'd swum there before, so they knew the spot well. From their understanding and previous experience, there was nothing to be feared in those waters. The area was accessible to the public, or better said, part of it was accessible to the public, even young kids wanting to play in the water. The creek crossing was immediately adjacent to the Lambels Lagoon access gate to the Black Jungle Conservation Reserve. Lambels Lagoon is a mostly rural suburban area on the fringe of metropolitan Darwin, Australia. Bryony Goodsell, her sister, and their friends were all part of the community's few hundred inhabitants. The Black Jungle Conservation Reserve, the designated place for their adventure on March 16, 2009, is a 10,000-acre protected area and part of the Adelaide River coastal floodplain. It's a wetland habitat supporting large numbers of wildlife. The reserve's open woodland savanna, its monsoon rainforest and swamps, provide rich habitats for numerous varied species, such as magpie geese, water pythons, and the terrifying saltwater crocodiles. To Bryony and the rest of the children, the area was simply perfect for outdoor adventures. They usually swam in the creek when it filled with water during the wet season. On that Sunday, the kids initially swam near the access gate to the reserve, so not quite in the protected area. Each access gate was fitted with a sign indicating access by permit only. It wasn't unusual for rangers to deal with illegal entry by hunters. Some members of the public also used their vehicles to gain illegal entry to the reserve, most often than not by damaging gates and fences. As for permits, they were only granted for scientific research. Bryony Goodsell, her sister Bethany, and their friends Naomi and Aiden swam for a while on the public side of the fence. But shortly after, they decided to go further downstream to another crossing, this one located inside the reserve. This new creek crossing had a deeper but less fast-flowing pool of water. In order to get to this spot, the four children had to go through a wire boundary fence and walk a short distance. Despite the reserve's reputation as a habitat for some dangerous species, there was no warning about the possibility of crocodile activity in the area. As the reserve rangers knew, there was plenty of crocodile activity within the reserve, especially in the wet season. But despite this, the rangers weren't aware that people were swimming at the reserve. After all, public access was strictly prohibited. This meant, at least in the rangers' perspective, that the chance of interaction between crocodiles and humans was low in the reserve. But people were swimming there. Shortly after the decision to swim elsewhere had been taken, the kids reached the creek crossing inside Black Jungle Reserve. The water levels were indeed high, the way they'd expected, but the creek was also flowing fast. Any adult might have hesitated to get into the water. Most likely, an adult wouldn't have entered the water at all. The conditions were perfect for drowning. But these were kids. The youngest of them was only seven years old. The oldest, only 12. Children aren't the best at assessing the potential dangers of a situation. And to make matters even worse, these particular kids had no idea there were crocs in the area. So instead of worrying about dying and turning around to leave, 
The group of four entered the water at about 5.30 p.m. They splashed around, swam, and played, happy to have some fun. But then everything changed in the blink of an eye. Suddenly, 11-year-old Bryony Goodsell started to scream for help. The other kids turned toward the girl and saw she was starting to go under the water. At first, one of her friends thought Bryony had a vine wrapped around her waist and she was struggling to free herself. But then the same friend saw the truth was far more terrifying. A crocodile tail came out of the water and then went right back in. Crocodile, their friend yelled, turning to look for the other children. When the kids looked back, Bryony was gone. The children scrambled out of the water towards safety. Authorities were alerted. Police started looking for Bryony. Human remains and a pair of shorts were found the following day, on Monday, over 1,400 feet from where the girl disappeared on Sunday. DNA tests confirmed the remains were indeed Bryony's. Coroner Greg Cavanaugh confirmed the death was due to a crocodile attack. Even more, evidence suggested it was a saltwater crocodile of about 10 feet that attacked the little girl. Saltwater crocodiles are not only the largest living reptile, but they are also the most aggressive crocodile species. They are apex predators, preying on any living creature within their reach. The search for the crocodile responsible for the attack continued throughout Monday, but it was called off on Tuesday. The reasoning behind this decision was simple. Rangers believed the crocodile had headed back into a floodplain, which made the search impossible. Floodplains teem with crocodiles. There was no guarantee that authorities would be able to pinpoint the exact animal that killed Ryany and Goodsell. An investigation found that residents in the area had no idea there were crocodiles in the creek. The only resident that seemed to be aware crocodiles could be in the creek had also swam in the exact same waters before. Ryany's mother, Charlene O'Sullivan, believed the wording of the sign, access by permit only, was misleading. She argued that the kids might have believed the sign indicating that vehicles and hunting were indeed prohibited, but not entering the area by foot. Even more, signs indicating prohibited activities, such as swimming, were also added. And finally, all entry gates to the reserve were fitted with crocodile warning signs. While crocodile culling was discouraged, authorities reviewed and adjusted the saltwater crocodile management plan after Bryony's death. The current crocodile management plan prepared and approved by the Northern Territory government promises the community that there will be increased attention to and efforts with regard to public safety, said coroner Greg Cavanaugh. Ryanese family asked to be left alone to grieve their huge loss. They released a statement calling Bryony a beautiful, innocent, and fearless child that touched the lives of many. The family also called Bryony's death a tragic accident. Their statement said, Kids being kids don't always see possible dangers. No one is to blame for this tragedy. It is just one of those things.